when we talk about, I was curious to get, because I, I think I seen somewhere where you said you um monogamous, right? You practice monogamy. Mm-hmm. And we hear, every time we talk about like men and having multiple wives, we hear Muslim, right? And mm-hmm. I was wondering, what is your thoughts on polygamy? Mm. Well, you know, 50% of marriages work out. You know, um, so monogamy has its place in the world because it's an institution that works for many, right? 50% of people that get in it, there's a 50-50 chance it's going to work out. Mm-hmm. But then there's a 50-50 chance it won't. I think we all customize at different levels and scales. We live in a society that generalizes everything. Facts. And that generalization does not take into account, right, the customization of who you are doesn't care about your sign, doesn't care about your personality type, your human design, doesn't care about your psychological background, your preference, none of that. There's a general assumption of that if you don't follow this, we're going to grade you good or bad. Mm. Some people, I believe, and maybe a small percentage of people on this planet Earth, they're not built for monogamy. There's no way that you can tell me And there's no science to back up that every person on the planet Earth is built for monogamy. It's an institution. It's a rule. It's it's traditionalism. And I think that it's good and it should be instilled because I think what it does is it allows us to nation build on a level to where we have some discipline. But I have to take into account the percentage of the planet Earth who are not built like that. Mm. And when you take into that account, you look at the people who are not doing it successfully. One Mm. would have to say maybe they're not built for it. Right. And then you want to have the counter argument to say, I am prove it. That's it. Now. So when we get to the conversation about monogamy, it's not just Muslim. We looking at, you know, our ancestral intelligence Polygamy or polygamy. When we looking at it, you're going to look at African countries. Right. And you're going to see them practicing it. Right. I just left Ghana. In Ghana, somebody told me I need to have 22 wives. Mm. Right. You got that much money. I ain't got no time. Hey, 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 now. I ain't got to have no 22 wives. Maybe 19. This guy. No, I'm just messing with you. I'm going to do monogamy. But, you know, I believe that, you know, you have to look at these different structures and orders across the planet Earth. But I believe that here in America, we have to start with the foundation of one. Mm. If you can't make a relationship work with one person, what makes you think you're going to make it work with two? Mm. Right. And then you have to look at the qualifications of people who can even meet the standard to even begin to have a conversation because it has to go to financial, has to go to emotional and spiritual. Mm. Right. Do you even have the ability to meet those qualifications? When we look at the percentage of people who would even meet it, it would be so low. Right. That you should just allow them people to handle their business and you handle yours because you don't even fit that criteria. Mm. So I believe that, you know. Um, if the world can support gay marriage, and I think they can support a person having multiple marriages, especially when we have a society where people have multiple baby mamas but no responsibility or accountability to their family. Mm. I think um, monogamy is super important because of discipline too, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And um, this isn't to go against what nobody practiced, but I think it's important for men especially because we should, we should have that discipline. Do you think do you think if you survey a million men, what percentage of them you think would say that if you gave them the option of polygamy, how many of them you think would practice it? If they believe it was going to be a successful I mean, situation. Honestly, I would say probably nine hundred thousand. Mm. So ninety percent. So this is why, as you say, discipline has to be in order because the average man, right, and I know Muslims, Christians, Asians, all of them around men, the world. Period. If you do a survey, but nobody cares what a man wants, that's not the empathy of the nation. The empathy of the nation is that you have to have discipline regardless of what you want, Mm. right? So that goes back to the conversation to do what you want. Facts. We don't really believe in that, right? Because if men were to practice, and some people would say, well, you already do it, right? Let's take that away, right? Let's take that off the table. Uh, you, You know, when the rule goes against what you naturally want, People break those rules because it's not acceptable behavior. Say right? that one more time. So look at the way women do sexual liberation, right? They say, well, I need to be half naked, show my ass, be sexually free to be with whoever I want to, right? Because society said that we shouldn't do that and we judged if we don't do that. Mm-hmm. So they believe that that's liberation when you go against those rules and those confines that was set to you, right, that makes you respectable and makes you valuable. 
right? Men, if you go survey most of them, and I'm talking about from a heart to heart, whether they could be successful at it, whether they should, idealistically, a lot of men, right, would say that, yeah, I would practice polygamy, right, especially if I grew up in a world with it, right? So that means idealistically, a lot of men want to practice polygamy, mm. right? But society says it's not. So that means that if men were to go through a so-called liberation movement, then they would practice liberation in connection to what they think is natural for them. Mm. But that's not where we at, and, and nor do I think that that's where we should be, right? I believe that it should be into the practice of monogamy, but I'm a thought leader. I like to think about things. Whether it's my perspective, whether it's the other, I like to reflect upon all these different thoughts, right? Nah, it's like when you go back in time, we have philosophers. So in a lot of things I'm a philosopher on, it's the art of thinking for me. So this is why when you ask questions, I usually have already answered because I thought about it mm. already. I've reflected upon these things. So this is why I'm not always answering from a personal standpoint. I'm answering from an empathetic standpoint, putting myself in other people's shoes, putting myself in this generation's shoes where the deconstruction of relationships, ideas around relationships are completely brand new today. Let's let's talk about that, though. You 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 somebody who big on saying you are like zero zero point one, right? Mm -hmm. Like. That's what you... Oh, that's just a statistical fact, though. Cool. I, I didn't make me in the... Oh, I did make me in I the... I feel like we all are, though. Yeah, not everybody. But that's a different... We all are, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. Statistical fact, we are, literally. It depends Nobody on what, has It your... depends on what category. We're statistically, we are human beings. I mean, like, categorically, we are human beings. And we're all z zero, but, zero point one. But Nobody has, nobody sees things, well, they can see things the way you see it. Nobody has your exact blood. Nobody has yeah. your exact thoughts at the exact time. Nobody has the, ex like, nobody is yeah, you. Yeah, but most people are just general manufactured carbon copies of society. Somebody else, too. You know what I'm saying? You know, every, you can make, every machine is not exactly the same. Of course. Right? But they all usually have the same function. It's how you use that machine. Facts. That's what makes you rare, how you express yourself. And most people, they'll maximize or express themselves in an original way to where they increase their rareness or their value. Because most people are regurgitating sh that they see or even they hear or even they read, to be honest. Which like, would be fine if it was the right thing. <sighs> That's, ah, I can't. If you, follow, if you follow something good, but speak a good word. But what do you believe in, though? Like, Again, not to go back, like Malcolm X, like uh, uh, Martin Luther King. Like, but what do you believe in? Yeah, you can follow something, but what do you believe in? That's what makes you different in my, in my perspective. Well, the only way, I mean, you can say that, but how can a person say they know what they believe in outside of being influenced by beliefs, right? Because we have different environments, different parents. All of these inform who we are. But doing your due diligence to find out what you don't like. Doing it's the your due way, diligence. It's the way you take things and the way you express them. Right. You can tell me something, depending on my level of consciousness, experience and reflection. I want to do something different with that information or that knowledge than somebody else would. Mm. Right. So it's not so much what you know, it's about what you do with what you know. Right. So it's like you give two people the Bible and they may have completely different interpretations of it. Right. Same thing with the Quran. So, you know, but they can both do good with it. Mm. They could have seen two different perspectives. That's your personality that seems that, well, this is the part of the war I'm going to fight. And you decide to fight that part. Doesn't make one more valuable than the other. It doesn't. Like, and like you said, it's about what you do with it. Because even we, we had these conversations about the goat gene. And I'm going to go back to monogamy, I promise. Um, but Because I definitely want to hit back into that. But we talk about this goat gene and what you do with it. A lot of times being that zero zero point one type person, just through my experience, nothing makes them different than the work that they put in. We look at Tom Brady. We look at Michael Jordan. We look at uh, I don't I don't I can Kobe Bryant. We look at the greats, the Malcolm X's, the 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 Martin Luther Kings, the Marcus Garvey's. Like everybody that was great, it wasn't that they they were any different than you and I or somebody else's. What they did with their knowledge, and that's why I say a lot of times people just regurgitating. But that also makes them great as well, because a lot of times person ain't filled with nothing, so they can't do nothing. Facts. So it's like. You know, it could be two cups on the table, both filled with a liquid substance. You won't know till you drink them, right? But they both fill with something different. The potential of them are almost equal to the same. I can quench my thirst. But one may have some goddamn nootropics in there that's going to light my brain up and have me super energized. One may just be full of sugar. I'm going to be energized and then come down. Mm. When I think about people, I think about the substance of what they made of, right? And you can only activate based on your substance. And you got to right? so, get it. 
yeah, if you tell two people to go do the same thing, it depends on the amount of knowledge that they have and their ability to execute that thing at a high level. Or when ability. I look at great ones, I look at what they went through and then how they activated what they went through. Yeah. So the specialness, you're right, it is in the motion, right? You're only as good as the work that you do, right? But what did you have before you went into motion, right? So like before I touch the social media thing, I'm studying marketing, I'm studying branding. So yeah, you wanted to study it. I mean, you wanted to tap into it and do it, but you didn't, what did you do in preparation? What was that time you spent in the womb? The womb is not just the time you spend in your mother's stomach, right? The womb is the time you spend in the darkness preparing for the light. So a lot of those people went through so much darkness, harnessing it, and then when it was time for them to get in the light, that's why you seen they were special mm. and they shine different. I think, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm saying, but go back to um your, uh, your point on polygamy, right, or uh, monogamy. I feel like the opposite of what you said, right? Most people would say yes, but that's why I want to be monogamous in a way because I do, and I'm going to say this just honestly, like I think I am a part of or should be a part of that 1% is how we say it, right? I, that's who I know I am, right? In order to be that person, I have to walk a line of just be different, right? Mm -hmm. I understand. I'm going to keep it all the way 100 with you. I'm engaged and shit. There's women out here that look great, amazing. But I know that I, the person I want to be and the person I want to die, the legacy I want to leave, I want them to say, Jay was this, 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 and then polygamy. I mean, monogamy is one of them things. Say I was faithful to one person. You get what I'm saying? And, and yeah, and that's because of the way you grew up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's because and when you look at a person, it's it's like it's a, a the CIA do a thing where they get a dossier on a person. They look at their background, look at the, who they are, their mm. parents, their beliefs, the way they think. So they be like, this makes sense because in his foundation, this is what he's seen, this is what he grew up in, this is why this belief became hard, and this is how the type of household that he went through. Everybody has different experiences, mm. right? So it's like my brother Steven Speaks was explaining discipline. He said discipline for two men could be completely different. Mm. If you're somebody who greatly believes in monogamy, right, and that's just, that's like who you are, right? It takes way less discipline than a man who don't really believe in it, but he believes it's the right thing to do, right? So it's going to require him more discipline. Then add on top of that man has a lot of money. A lot of influence, a power, lot of emotion. right? So now the temptation is higher because there are so many more women that want him, right? So his discipline level has to be higher, right, than a man, let's say, you say he's just an average man and he believes in this thing, right? Or he's not, you know, on social media, nobody really knows. He's not dealing with the same temptation. So it's like, for me, it's just taking in the, the empathy that we're all different. So the requirements of each man is not the same. No, that's a fact. Right? And that's all the point that I come from because, like I said, I believe in monogamy, but I'm speaking on it from a standpoint of thinking about how we're all different a lot of times and why, you know, you can villainize one man and say he's better than the other because he doesn't practice what you practice because you don't know what's required for that man to do the same thing for you to do. But it ain't about villainizing, right? It's about holding each other accountable. But we like, villainizing in society. That's why it's illegal. Oh, no facts. I'm talking about our conversation. Yeah. We're not villainizing. Like, but polygamy is literally illegal, right? In, 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 in what, 49 states? So it's already villainized because for you to do it, you'll be practicing something that's illegal in mm. the Western world. That's a great point. So that's why I speak on it in that manner. It's the same way of anything that's illegal. People look at it as immoral when it's illegal. I speak on it in a point to challenge men to be great because, like you said, for all of those reasons, it is hard, especially if you're out here and you got motion. It's hard as hell, but that's what makes you great because you're not, you're not doing what everybody. I feel like most people... I can't speak for the world, so I mean, I say that. A lot of people in my circle that I know would love to practice polygamy, right? Shit, I would have loved it at one point in time, and it's still, it'd be tempting to be keeping it all the way 100. But that's the that's the very much reason why I don't want to do it, because it's so tempting, right? And I understand that that's what's going to, a part of what makes me great. And I feel like I want to challenge other and people I to do the same that. thing. I respect that. I, and I think that that's a that's an honorable thing. And I believe that we should focus on, you know, one Right. And we should figure out how we can master that domain before mm. we even have any more conversations around this subject. Mm. <coughs> Bless you. Uh. <coughs> Bless you. Oh. Uh. But if you was born in Africa, it might be different, but I wasn't. Yeah. I mean, you're right though. Contextually, you can't go out there and everybody be trying to villainize it. That's that's the that's the problem I have with it. I just don't like how we judge people because we grew up in America and they grew up in a different. We grew up in a Western society. Oh, yeah. And you have to understand that 
if it's not an ancestral practice, it might not be in your DNA. You know what I mean? So you may be going against your own DNA to practice the rules of the land to be considered a good man. Mm. Okay. But yeah, that's practice sounds- malig- monogamy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm never just going to have just a, a one thought on it. I, I got all around thought process. So, all right. So hold up, though. You got to you gotta choose a side, though, right? We know that. You can't just straddle the fence. That's not straddling the fence. It's speaking both truths. How do... How how do you speak both truths? If I was born in Africa and Ghana, I promise you, I probably have multiple wives. No problem. Especially being a man of of money and position and power, and that would be normal, and that would be chill, and nobody in the land would be judging me for it, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't even be a conversation. So that's speaking both truths, just putting yourself in. It's different some... contexts that matters. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. it. The context is different, so the empathy has to be applied. I speak to a global audience. So I'm not just speaking to somebody who has my frame of thought and my reference point. I'm Mm. speaking to people like, what? Over here is this and over there is this, but I'm like this. And it's like I'm speaking to all different points of consciousness so that they can see themselves in the conversation as well. 